in 24 hours, we'll have seen the Goonies three times, uh, which is, I don't know, not enough. I don't think. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Francis's toupee. I don't wear a hairpiece. <laughs> 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 That's in a cutoff sweatshirt and sweats with a red bandana on. <laughs> it's a bold choice. And then a giant man with a Superman t shirt and red suspenders and a pirate hat on. I can't imagine what's going through. Like, who the fuck are these guys coming to see this kid's move? <laughs> Welcome to Long Walk Short Drink Remembers The Goonies. I can't believe we are fucking doing The Goonies. This is my favorite f- movie on of all time. Right here, this guy. Hell yeah. Hell and, yeah. Uh, <laughs> hell yeah. Shit. <laughs> Already a throwback to last episode. Um, uh, I am Palmer. This is the second. This is the second recording that we've done here since I've been here in Northfield, Minnesota. Uh, really excited about that. Um, to be able to podcast with my good buddy Dave. Yeah, generally I'm saying Dave podcasting at you from Northfield, Minnesota and you're coming from Dayton, Ohio, but we are yeah. here together today. Yeah, which and, is fantastic. Uh, and to get to talk about uh one of uh, and arguably the greatest film ever made. Yeah, certainly your favorite, right? Yeah, yeah. And a definite favorite of mine. And we've we've talked about it on the show before, I think, but uh I would love to get into, you know, just to have it all in one place, even like how it came to be your, you know, how you remember it as a kid and all of that. Yeah. And, um, and what brought you, I mean, I, well, spoilers or whatever the hell, but Goonies is the reason Palmer came to, uh, Northfield, Minnesota. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> uh, which was totally spontaneous. Uh, Dave just happened to send me an email that says, uh, I really wish you had an Alamo draft house near you or you live near me <laughs> so that we could, because they were, I thought it was like a, a double feature, like oh, a kid yeah. adventure double feature, like Stand By Me followed yeah. by the Goonies, <laughs> yeah. like, which that, that would have been fantastic. But then it was just like, um, so this theater chain, Alamo Draft House, yep, from, um, from Texas, based in Texas, but it, they now have branches around the country. Yeah. Uh, do these movie parties mm-hmm. um, and not all the uh, different uh, theaters get the same movie parties. But it just so happens that your Al- the Alamo Draft House near you is doing these Goonie parties, and so yeah, uh, well, I, they generally actually even only do like one screening per movie. It's pretty rare oh. that they do multiple show times. In fact, um, I was we we've been talking off air uh, about how in some ways I'm grateful for that because I would go or be tempted to go to so many of them. I mean, they did a cyborg 30th anniversary oh my screening. Gosh. Yeah. Uh, they did roadhouse on the same night. We went across the hall to see uh, uh, nine to five. Uh, I saw that for the first time. And, um, but, and I saw, I actually, and they do double feature. They do like basically cult movie programming in addition to normal, you know, yeah, the run of the mill, all the other uh, theaters uh, and spoiler too. we've already gone to one. So like, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I like I said, I think I can buy a ticket and come out there if you're willing to host, you know, if you and the bride <laughs> are willing to host me for those days and you're, you know, you're able to get out of work, you know, in time that we can go to the go to see that. And then that ended up we were going to we Dave was like, well, which one do you want to go to? They're doing this chunk party. Yeah, chunk, chunk food, junk food. Yeah, chunk, party. chunk food fest. Where where you get like, what oh. was it? A half a pizza, a bag of chips. Yeah, half a personal uh, pizza. Yeah, by, like, yeah. No, no. I know. I was so excited when yeah. they said that, and then I saw it, and I immediately said, "We're gonna have to order more pizza." <laughs> <laughs> Which we did it. It actually was a satisfying yeah. amount of food. Also, a baby Ruth. Yeah, a, and then a full size baby Ruth. Yeah, and later uh, in the evening they brought little out. school carton of milk, yes, like you, that you would get in kindergarten, <laughs> yeah. and then. Uh, uh, the baby roof, and then the yeah, Rocky Road ice cream later. Yeah. So that was 
They the, brought that out kind of around the time that that appears in the movie. Did yeah. You that? Oh, oh, yeah. They, it was very well well timed. <laughs> that was cool. And uh, then um, tonight we're going to go see, which is like the actual film party where it's encouraged to interact with the movie. Yeah. In way, like encourage. yell lines. Yeah. And, yeah. All that stuff, and I think so. they allow you to like get your phones out and stuff like that because generally Alamo has a they they really strict about you know phones dark and silent and you'll be tossed out after one warning and then they'll put like in the preamble and they're like seriously and yeah. they also the it's one of those places where you can order food and you're in a big recliner but like at any point in time you just kind of put the order card facing sort of vertically instead of horizontally and they know to come take your order and you can do that about a noisy table even though well i guess there are tables but um it, it's I like can, theaters stadium seating but big I, recliners i think I, and all of that is great but that was the only luckily it was a movie that i had seen a thousand times because it was like there's constantly movement yes like, there's yeah there's like eight people running all the time yeah like, yeah running to take care of stuff so which they're all in black and like their uni- their work uniforms are all black. So when the theater gets dark, it's really like just these floating heads and arms <laughs> like running around yeah. the theater. Yeah. Um, but that would, I could, I might, I would be interested to see a movie I haven't seen there yet to see how distracting that would be yeah. for me. Like if it takes me out of the movie. That's around. true. Yeah. And also it's, you know, they, um, yesterday it was like not i don't know that everybody always orders food and all that yeah. stuff but yesterday they had like the multiple courses and every single person was brought that right so there was probably extra sure but um that's a good point actually i and i i think the favorite is the only movie i've gone there to see that was like a new release yeah. everything else has been you know although i went for an alien double feature <laughs> which I'd never seen either of those. But so, yeah, they, w- I mean, when you first thought it was the Stand By Me Goonies double feature, like that's, that, that could happen. Oh, <laughs> it man. just w- didn't so happen to be the case. <laughs> right, right. No, that would have been awesome. Um, yeah, I, but it was, it was fantastic. And then we came home last night and watched the commentary yeah. for the Goonies. So yeah. like in 24 hours, we'll have seen the Goonies <laughs> three times, uh, which is, I, uh, I, uh, I don't know. Not enough. I don't oh, think. No. Like, yeah. Um, yeah. So it was just we uh, dressed up. So we'll make sure we tweet those pictures yeah, out. I dressed up as maybe, sloth. And, yeah. We'll just we could superimpose them. Oh here yeah. Too. We can do yeah. that here. Uh, so if you if you look right <laughs> here, yeah, that's me and Dave dressed as uh, the Goonies and uh, Brand and uh, you you dressed as I, Brand I did my Brand. Yeah. And uh, I dressed as sloth. Um, which was great, and handed out baby Ruths <laughs> yes, afterwards, awesome. <laughs> uh, like fun size baby Ruths, and that was all Palmer, like his idea to bring in uh, those as an extra interaction, I guess. Yeah, uh, and uh, we were the only ones dressed up, but it's not like I don't know that kind of thing <laughs> is celebrated there. Yeah, I think the staff as we walked by were just like nice. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, there was nobody that was just like get a load of these jerks, you yeah. know, like everybody <laughs> who. R- the only one was the. <laughs> girl who greeted us the the worker oh, our uh, server, our yeah. wait- server yeah. is probably uh the best way to say that yeah uh she did not have any clue that we were dressed up as people from the movie <laughs> like she called me i captain yeah. you know and like uh which was funny so which when i think about that like to see a dude that's in like a cut off sweatshirt and sweats with a red bandana on. <laughs> it's a bold choice. And then a giant man with a Superman t shirt and red suspenders and a pirate hat on. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, I can't imagine what's going through. Like, who the fuck are these guys coming to see this kids' movie? <laughs> like, oh man, that was funny. So, yeah, there were a lot of kids because it was a Sunday screening. You could tell, like, the parents were bringing their kids to kind of pass on like, the tradition. Of- yeah. This was their kid film, and perhaps now it can be their kids' kid film. Yeah. I wonder how, how it seems undeniable to me, but I wonder how it rings, how it comes across for like kids that are, I mean, it's not like there's any electronic devices in the movies. They don't even play video games. The closest no. they come to any of that is like watching uh, an MTV video, and Corey Feldman. And in like the opening credits, uh, Chunk is playing an arcade oh, when the is. police That's chase right. goes That's by. That's right. Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah. That's but it's I mean it's a stand up arcade. Even that seems like super outdated. Yeah. Like to see a stand up arcade like that, yeah. You know? I didn't even register. But yeah, let's um that's the catch up basically yeah. of what what we're talking about and what we're doing. Yeah, that's uh, what the reason you came out. And, yeah. Uh, uh, I mean, we could say a little like what we we had that great day 
um, oh, while it's all yeah. still fresh of just, uh, w- so that was the reason you came out and then we're going to do these other things and we recorded another special uh, episode that will air around, you know, this time. Yeah. Um, and, um, and the, well, and then we did some promo shots. So like we landed, yeah. you landed, I brought you to the studio on the way to the pick you up <laughs> like, in the morning. I was like, Hmm. So it was like the day before <laughs> I was about to fly out and Dave was like, we were just touching base and he's like, do you have any ideas about what you want to do or anything? I guess it wasn't the day before we had talked. I was like, I would love to expand my juicy Lucy experience. Cause the, the last time that I was out here was when the inception of long walk, short drink happened. That's right. Yes. Yeah. And then, yeah. uh, which it wasn't even called long walk, short drink yet at no, that point. It was and just, then let's do a podcast sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> or <try> yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, we, I had one juicy Lucy, which is like the, what the, the dish that Minnesota is known for, right. Or yeah. Minneapolis yeah. area is, is, is known for. Right. And, uh, it's basically two quarter pounders smushed and sealed together with like three slices of American cheese in there oh, so like so good <laughs> it steams and cooks and melts the cheese and it's like every place when they sit it down is like be careful like don't bite into that yet and yeah. it like <laughs> it will burn you it will be awful i i i mean it's just the idea of a burger coming with a warning like a, and i thought like oh maybe it's this place or maybe it's that place no every place because we ended up i dave was like what do you want to do and i was like i want to expand my juicy lucy experiences there's a guy on YouTube who I've watched. He did nine Juicy Lucy's in one day. So we did his top three. Give uh, him a shout out. We'll tweet that. We could put that video on our videos mentioned page. Uh, yeah, um, I think that's um, that? nine Juicy Lucy's in nine hours. It's on uh, Bon Appetit's channel. Um, Alex Eats It All is what, the, what that show is called. Um, uh, so he eats nine Juicy Lucy's in the Minneapolis area. In nine hours. Which, oh, wow. Uh, which, I, he's shooting a show. He makes it a point to explain, like, I take a bite, yeah, really. Okay. You know, <laughs> yeah. like, I'm not, I can't. <laughs> we So we ended up eating his top three. So yeah. we did, um, which if I go into the... Was it Groveland Tap? The Groveland Tap. Uh, the Nook, which is yeah. the one that's, like, close, it's attached to a bowling alley. Yeah. Which we didn't see. I'd, I forgot about that. And then, and then make a point of it. Matt's Bar, which is one of the two places that yeah. claim to be the originator of the Juicy Lucy. Yeah. Right. Yep. And that one had what is what was that magazine? The the like white rectangular frame. It had a lot of accolades. I want to. I can't remember which magazine it was, but <laughs> and it's like a medal hanging from it. Yeah. I, it's a prestigious. It magazine. might be St. Paul magazine or something like. That. It's like a maybe no. A little, it's a national well, travel. Oh, so magazine. you saw some, Okay, it, and they're all over. Like where yeah. it had won like <laughs> so many multiple yeah. years in a row. So, um, we definitely liked. And I well, I don't want to speak for you. The Nook was it was yeah hands, hands down, down the like best. so good, amazing. <laughs> uh, but Matt's when you tasted it, like it was a real big toss up and you could taste why that is considered the original. Like it has all, it's like this baseline flavor too. Yeah, Like it somehow tastes like the fifties or when that place was opened, like something about the burger itself. And I think the the environment helps support that. Like there's a line out the door. They only accept cash. Yep. The griddle is like behind the bar. So they're mixing drinks right next to the guy that's frying the burgers, like all open air. And like there's two fryers and a griddle, and that's it. And they're like, yeah, it takes forty five minutes to get your juicy Lucy, and <laughs> and, and, and like, but all of that like helped feed into that. Mm-hmm. And then you, yeah, and there's just this pile of grilled onions that he's like scooping onto the burgers, and man, it, the, so that was really awesome. And then we, um, after the first two places, it was like we definitely need to put some space in between yeah. that and the third one. Yeah, uh, yeah. So I don't know how that guy did nine in nine hours yeah we were eating the, the whole thing i think after the second place we didn't quite finish all like our <laughs> fries, fries and, and stuff like stuff. that yeah and we those were probably two and two hours or possibly even less than yeah two hours. <laughs> well we drove from the from uh the groveland tap essentially to the nook uh and then we drove from there to um tilt pinball bar uh mm-hmm. which uh dave when he asked like what are what you know what do you want to do while we're here uh, city wise, because um, you live about forty minutes, forty five minutes yeah, south of best, the city. Yeah. So I mean, at shortest, <laughs> <laughs> it was a good idea since you were coming up there to pick me up. 
which I like planning like that, like to take advantage of the city. Yeah. And we yeah. like made a day of the city. So then there wasn't, it didn't feel like there was any pressure of like trying to entertain or try to do something. Yeah. Or trying know? to get back up there. Yeah. Somehow. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I said, I would love to hit up a, a pinball spot to see if there's any pinball spots. And there were two really good ones around that area, but one was right in the city, which was this tilt pinball bar. And, uh, man, what a great place. Yeah. Such a good time. That was my first time really playing pinball. I mean, I think otherwise I played on a machine that's like at this lake that the bride goes to with her family <laughs> and, uh, you don't have to pay for it and it barely yeah. works. <laughs> yeah. And I probably, you know, did five hits at it in the last like you know 10 years or so so, yeah. so, so this was the first so i was really i was watching you a lot like kind of watching how you handled the flippers but generally then was just trying to keep the ball alive yeah. while you were sort of strategizing but it was cool to be in a place where like that was it it was just just pinball machines they didn't didn't they maybe serve some food same like with matt's it, it, you, you, matt's menu matt's bar is like this big you yeah. know and it's like juicy lucy's and burgers like, that's kind of it. Yeah. So it's it's nice these places that are so specific because you kind of get the yeah really concentrated experience. And if there's any pinballers in the Minneapolis area, like definitely check out Tilt because that like for twenty bucks you get a hundred tokens, so you get way more than you would for quarters, right? You'd yeah. only get forty quarters, you get a hundred tokens, and then each the most expensive machine was two tokens. So we essentially got fifty games for twenty bucks, fifty credits for twenty yeah. bucks, which yeah. is dirt cheap i mean especially considering that all the machines were essentially new limited editions they have a full-time staff that maintains them this is all for the pinball community who might be listening to this full-time staff that maintains them so they all play flawlessly um they also had a killer queen arcade cabinet yeah, there yeah. which i had not seen one of those uh in the wild before uh, which, for those of you who don't know what that is, it's like a 10-person arcade game where five, a team of five plays against another team of five. And the controls are very simple, but it's a really deep strategy game, uh, which was awesome. And kind of connected with that guy. We connected with a couple people uh, that just, like, hopped in on games with us. Mm -hmm. uh, still, like, showing me that the pinball community is just a really awesome community to yeah, be a part of. it was of. cool like uh, i was feeling a little bad that we were hovering around that jurassic park game <laughs> because it was new and people wanted to play it but ultimately when the handoff was made like the guy was super like nice and talked to us he's like hey you probably want to try to do this and this and oh yeah like told thing. us the strategies and then um and then we kind of got to pay that forward a little bit because mm -hmm. there was another guy who was he you could tell yeah he wanted to play it so the jurassic park that just came out within the last like month wow you know so um, for one to be there already, which was fantastic. So there was a guy while we were playing it who was hovering. You could tell he wanted to play. And I was like, we were going to play a second game. You want to get on on that? And so that was awesome. He, he got in on that and played with us, which was fantastic. And yeah, I got to play a bunch of machines that I just have not got to play before. So any favorites that from that day? Um, that Monster Bash limited edition, actually all three of those. So there's the Monster Bash and then the Attack from Mars and then the Medieval Madness. Mm. All three of those really blew me away with how yeah. how great they looked. That Monster Bash one especially. Uh, that was my favorite too, which uh, Monster Bash, and it's actually licensed from Universal. So it's the it's Frankenstein's monster, the Wolfman, the creature from the Black Lagoon, the Bride of Frankenstein, Dracula, the Mummy, and they're all kind of integrated. And they and then I guess if you if you do really well, they play as a band. Is that what? it yeah, is? Yeah, like the the, the goal top. is is you're trying to get them all so they can play a show together. Yeah. And so yeah. like there's tr like as you the different modes e each character has a mode then and you're trying to complete those modes. Yeah. yeah. And if you can get them all together, then they're going to play together. Uh, and, and you get awesome. a yeah. So. <laughs> Um, really fun game. Uh, I liked that one a lot. I liked, um, I liked that Pirates of the Caribbean, the Jersey oh, Jack yeah, Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah. That'd probably be a close second. That's, yeah, that was cool too. I took some pictures throughout the day. So when, if you're watching this on YouTube, um, you can see them overlaid and then we'll tweet some as well. Um, not to cut that too short, but speaking of YouTube, also, uh, 
Palmer was here. Oh yeah. We hit our milestone. We hit our hundred <laughs> subscribers, like which is fantastic. We have our unique URL. You can now go to uh unique chosen by YouTube, not yeah, by yeah. us. <laughs> yeah. We Bastards. Didn't get to pick it. Uh you can go to uh www.youtube.com slash long walk short drink. Yes, just spell indeed. it all out. Long walk, long walk short, short drink. drink. And you will very soon be able to go to www.longwalkshortdrink.com. Yeah. Uh, the LWSD pod will still forward to that, but mm-hmm. we procured that. We're trying to keep those URLs yeah. similar, so we procured the longwalkshortdrink.com URL. Yes. Uh, and as as it turned out, <laughs> we were we were really hovering around that uh, 100 um, mark. We'd gain one, we'd lose one, and um, and then I signed on while Palmer was actually here, and we were at 99. And the bride was sitting with us. I was like, hey, man, are you subscribed? And she's like, what are you, uh, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, to our YouTube. She's like, no, I don't even have a YouTube. It was like, everybody has a YouTube. Yeah, we have a yeah. Gmail account. So uh, she was our 100th subscriber. Yeah. <laughs> Which we're, we've di- we're not going to renege on our deal. There was, yeah. a, there was a legitimate, like, yeah. last subscriber she, yeah. first off she doesn't want our bullshit That's I, right, gu- yeah. I guarantee you she does not want our bullshit we asked her you like you want a blu-ray copy of stand by me and a stephen king's on writing and she's like oh no thanks <laughs> no thanks <laughs> have them uh, could that my on writing's already on the shelf <laughs> and the blu-ray stand by me is right over yeah. here already so so uh she was not interested no so <laughs> we're not we're not gonna reneg on that we we actually are able to know who our last subscriber yeah. was before yeah. her so we plan on reaching out to that subscriber and, and seeing if they're interested yeah, in, in the yeah. care package. So it's pretty cool. I've just had an absolute blast out here. We got to record with the bros and yeah, the uh, pod bros talking JCVD. Yeah. Which was, which was really fun. Super fun. Uh, again, like just reaffirming that the podcast community is yeah. a great community to be a part of. Yeah. Um, and then getting to see the Goonie so many times and hang out with you and the bride uh, just been Thank you so much for hosting me out here. You're welcome. Thank you for coming. Kind of dropping everything to uh, at last minute to accommodate me. I appreciate that. Uh, such a great time. So, and then all of this. Like, yeah, we spent so long getting this the this cable access three camera setup going. So, if you're not watching on YouTube, you're you're missing out. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, I mean, because like, well, and that's we kind of alluded to that at the beginning too. If we step through that whole day, Friday that I I landed at like nine in the morning. Yeah, and uh, we went Juicy right. Lucy places weren't open yet. No, no, nothing was open. So Dave was like, "I think we're gonna go to my work," and I'm like, "Okay." And then, and then it was like, and like just tease out these little bits of information, like a little at a time. Like I didn't have a master plan. I swear. So, so then, like, I think we're gonna go to my work, and I'm like, "Okay." So then we get to his work, and he's like, "I think we're gonna go to my work and get some coffee," and I'm like, "Okay, we can get some coffee." And then we're getting coffee. He's like, "I think we're gonna go to my work now that we have coffee." And we're going to go up and we're going to sign out a bunch of equipment so that we can, when we record, and I'm like, okay. Was that, then, was that a surprise to you, the equipment? No, part? no, no. Oh, okay. the equi- I, I, I um, thought it might have been. <laughs> I, um, I, I figured you would have had equipment, uh, but it w- which was fine that we, you know. So we, much equipment. Yeah, we, cameras, we go and get it. Lights. And then, this. so then we're heading up to like go get the equipment. He's like, I think while we're getting the equipment, <laughs> I think we're going to do a photo shoot. I was just thinking of doing this photo shoot and I'm I'm still in like the same clothes that I flew in. I'm sweaty. Uh, and I'm like, all right, I guess we're doing a, a photo shoot. We did a pro like a promotional photo shoot, which was great. And then signed out a ton of equipment. <laughs> so scary. Um, and then, uh, yeah, so that was like right off the plane, but which was good because as soon as we got that, all that stuff was handled, then all that all those other places were yeah. just opening or open and we were so, ready to eat <laughs> <coughs> we were indeed that um and that first one was great uh it just wasn't the best no so, yeah it was a fun experience but once we had that second one we knew yeah <laughs> like, holy cow <laughs> yeah it was so the man nook, was you can good, get there yeah the nook the was great the trip and all the like all the people were awesome like yeah, at each of the places they, nice they really chatted us up and yeah. like took care of us and we're really supportive of like, like, oh, you're going to go compare and all. You <laughs> yeah. Know? It was funny uh, how, how they, uh, it seemed like none of them had really heard of each other other than the other places that had heard of Matt's because of course that's where it yeah. all began. But yeah, the waitress or, or the server at Matt's. And, yeah. Like we said the other two places and she's like, she literally deadpan looked at us. She's like, I've never heard of those yeah, places. She has like, no idea. <laughs> like, like, I guess the, like it's to. Matt's and that's it. Like yeah. that's a, 
I stopped learning about Juicy Lucy's right. after I yeah. learned about this place. You know, like. I thought it was hilarious too. Though at the our waitress at the or the bartender really at the at the Nook, she was like, "I used to be a vegetarian." Yeah, <laughs> until, until I started, I started here. here. <laughs> it turned me around. <laughs> Good on you, Nook. Yeah. That's another great reason, you know. Yeah, that's that. That was. Oh uh, man, that this. It's been a really wonderful trip, and this has been a really. Um, I, I'm excited to kind of cap it off with this sort of final celebratory movie party v- version of Goonies that we're seeing tonight with the bride, who's going to dress up as Andy. Um, and I'll re- you know reprise my costume as Bran, and I'll Palmer be Esla. I'll be sloth again, and um, we'll share those pictures with you somehow. Be at this awesome theater yeah. with like great food and beer and tonight uh, we'll order what we want as opposed yeah. to the, what we're just sort of given as part of the package but yep yeah you can have one more juicy lucy if you want oh, <laughs> now we'll go juicy oh lucy. no pass, <laughs> I know. pass. we're both kind of yeah we've, we've we've lived it up these last few days absolutely we're feeling it <laughs> oh geez <laughs> i'm proud of myself I, so far and I'm, I'm not I'm not gotten hung over so i'm oh that's, that's i haven't a, gotten hung a, over it's either. a feat for yeah. me <laughs> so but speaking of uh hung over or at least drinking shall we finally sorry, I'm sorry yeah, let's, we put it off let's, so long no let's have let's let's crack these beers and then we'll set a timer and start talking about uh, yes so start what, talking uh, about goonies so we'll set it after we crack these because yeah so for new any new uh viewers or whatever that was an old uh yeah the, we can't talk about a movie longer than the movie yeah and that's just to keep us reined in right <laughs> yeah. some of these movies might deserve longer like more i, I would say more like focused conversation about it like, yeah um yeah for sure but we'll just talk about us yeah and reacting to it yeah, you guys can read imdb long. if you want to but this yeah. is yeah this is a uh, personal memories and all right so on three let's crack these oh, what are you re- oh he's drinking do you want to say does that matter? Oh, um, <laughs> I don't no. know. No, so this is a Stone Tangerine Express. This is a good summary IPA. Uh, Stone is a well-known brewery. I feel like they started the the microbrew IPA movement. I feel like because oh. they really got like arrogant bastard. Yeah, yeah. I remember I like seeing Stone. that oh, way sure. before, yeah. way before uh, any other microbrews. Like yeah. I feel like Stone was around a long time. And so they've really refined their taste a lot. And this is a delicious one. I like this one. A lot. Nice. And I'm drinking um, Bent Paddle Brewing Company's coffee ale out of, uh, out of Duluth. There you go. Yeah, and I had one of those on draft at Tilt, and it was delicious. Yeah, I had uh, two of them last night at Alamo. Probably have again tonight. I'm, I'm, in, I'm enjoying them. All right. All right. So on three, Paddle let's drink this. On three. Three. Very nice. All right, so I'm going to start this timer. Let's start it going at 15. Cheers, Long Walker. Cheers, my friend. Cheers, buddy. All right, so Goonies. Goonies. So this this is, uh, how long would you say has this been your favorite movie or beloved to you? I can tell you exactly to the year. Whoa, okay. Uh, 2008, because this is when it was officially my favorite movie. I, I, I guess it was probably my favorite before then, but when I defined it as my favorite movie was 2008. I was smoking a cigarette on my patio in my townhouse in Hawaii with Larry. Oh, wow. And Larry had asked me like three days before. He's like, what's your favorite movie? And uh, I really debated like what my favorite movie would be and what criteria I would base that on. Totally like doing high fidelity. Yeah. Right. Like man. In, in my head, like <laughs> yeah. what, what defines a favorite movie? What in um, my take finally, what I zeroed down to was watchability. Okay. Yeah, a, yeah. a favorite movie should be one that you could watch at any point in time, any mood, any quantity of it. And it just never gets old. And the only movie I could think of that was like, that was the Goonies. Like, and I've, I had said for years before then, like it, the credits could roll and you could rewind the VHS and restart it. And I would get just as entertained by yeah. it that second time back to back. I don't and, think I knew that. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> I don't think I knew that that's how you, def- you thought it through and decided. Yeah. 2008. And it was all based on watchability. And because I could not think of any other film that I still can't think of any film that if there's definitely films I really love, yeah. there's definitely films that I, I, I would say, of course, there's a, a hundred films I've seen that are made better than this, mm-hmm. right? Uh, and there's a hundred films that have a more impactful message or or performances in it that move me more, mm-hmm. you know? Yeah, yeah. Um, but like, 
I don't know, nothing sucked. Like, I've seen this movie so many times, and I'm sitting in that theater last night, and, like, I got sucked. I just sucked into it, mm-hmm. you know? Like, Yeah. I got, like, I don't I don't know if I was just purposely given over to it, but, like, things, I've seen it a handful of times, and, like, I'm like, oh, no. I'm like, oh, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah. And then I think to myself, like, what am I doing? I was like, you're having a good time, idiot. Just, yeah. just, uh, yep. <laughs> this is the fight I had with myself. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, no, it's, oh, God. It's, so, it, it's just watchability, and it's just so... So we know kid adventure movies are like my favorite, right? Mm-hmm. My favorite genre, if you can call that a genre. And this is, they even kind of talked about it in that behind the scenes a little bit where mm-hmm. it's like, it's just a group of kids, no adults, like going yeah. on like this fantasy adventure, you know? Yeah, yeah. And uh, like Richard Donner even says, like, it's an adventure movie. I didn't think of it as, a, what is he? what did he say in that making of? He's like, I never thought of this as like a fairy tale fantasy. It's mm-hmm. just an adventure. You know, yeah, we're yeah. going on an adventure. Um, what would you describe the the general? And uh, if you had to be like, t- if you're talking to a a kid and you're like, and they ask you what your favorite, my favorite movie is Goonies. Like, what's it about? Yeah, oh, <laughs> what, what would I say? Um, yeah, I would say it's about a group of friends who uh, are such good friends that they are able to. To save the day. I mean, the, the what, what's the what do they have to save the day? From? Their houses are going to get torn down by the rich people. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. You in know, Astoria. Like, in Astoria, <laughs> yeah. and some rich, greedy people are about to tear down their house, and they're going to have to all move away from each other, and that's really sad. And Hell so yeah. Yeah. they, instead of giving up, they decide that they're going to they they're going to try to find this treasure that everybody had already looked for and gave up trying to find, and they find it. Right. Yeah, yeah. Chester, Co- I could cry right now just thinking oh. about Mikey, like saying, like I know. Chester Copperpot, like that comes to him. He's like, he was a pro, and we got further than him. You yeah. know, like, yeah. Oh, that's so, <laughs> it's so good. And uh, you just uh, like, I feel like there was a lot of those movies in the eighties where it was like, you know, just because of the time that it was in with yuppies and and Reaganism, and mm-hmm. there was a lot of disparity. And so it was really easy to make the villains rich, greedy people, mm-hmm. you know, um, I, I like the, that if we don't do something, we're not going to see each other ever again. Yeah. That's pretty high stakes. Yeah. 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 Like literally, like the literally like tomorrow we're moving. Right. Right. And, it was like the down to the wire. Yeah. Yeah. And they're trying to get the bad guys are trying to get them to sign the papers and all of that. Yep. Uh, I just mean it. I just mean it. Oh, yes, yeah, right. Yeah. It does sound like a little loop when she says yeah. that. Like they play it twice. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you remember? So that's 2008 when you decided it was your favorite movie. Do you remember your experience of it uh, as a kid? Like yeah. as it was formulating your. I think I've told this story before. Um, I don't mind telling it again, obviously. But it, uh, so the first, my very first experience with this movie was. I would, um, we used to go over to my cousin's house all the time on the weekends. It was almost like a getaway for my mom and I, and my cousin was pretty much my same age (coughs) and my aunt and uncle lived in this farmhouse, like on a farm. And typically it would be like Friday, we'd get out there, we'd get pizza and they would rent a movie at the little like country store that was down the road from my aunt and uncle's farm and uh i remember my mom and my aunt left to go get the pizza and get the movie and they come back and i was like i was you know i was already hooked on movies by this point in my life which was would have been this came out in what 86 or 84 i think 85 but probably home video 86 yeah so home video 86 right um so i would have been around six or going on six and uh I remember my mom and my aunt getting out of the car, my mom walking up, you know, you parked in front of the farmhouse and then you walked up the grass hill, like to the porch. And as she was coming up, I remember coming up, riding my bike up and like, you know, that thing you do where you like hop off your bike and you just kind of like drop it and you keep walking, you know, like all in one fluid movement. movement. Yeah. Yeah, One (laughs) fluid movement. Like I did that. And because I was so excited that they were back, you know, both with pizza and with the movie. And it's like, what movie did you get? What movie did you get? And my mom goes, we got Goonies, and I heard Ghoulies. Right, right. Which <laughs> is another, like, 80s. I had already seen that 
<laughs> which is this like little B movie horror movie. HBO used to play that on a yeah. loop all the time. And it was in uh, the cover box is like the gremlin or like the goblin gremlin look, looking, yeah. looking thing coming out of a toilet. Yeah. And it says ghoulies, yeah. you know. And I was like, oh, ghoulies. I've already seen that movie. And so then, of course, I'm throwing a tantrum because I'm I don't want to see a movie I've already seen. I was hoping we were going to see a new movie. And my mom was like, no. Goonies, not ghoulies. And I'm like, well, what's that about? <laughs> and she didn't even know. Like, they just got it, right? And uh, and then we watched it that night. And I don't even remember. I, it's so funny. I remember that interaction. Yeah. I don't remember, like, that first viewing. But I do remember it, the impression it made on me and how much I just absolutely loved it. I yeah. Mean, there's a, every kid can relate to, there's, I mean, there's stereotypic typical like archetypes in there yeah yeah and that's intentional so that every kid can relate to at least one character yeah you you got uh data who's he's like an asian kid who invents things yep and you got uh mouth played by Corey feldman who's like uh just a wiseacre kind of smart alecky kid um you got chunk who uh you know chubby and uh and foul mouth yeah just like (laughs) It got, yeah, it's got a little sinister streak to him that you find out about yeah, in the he, movie. He, he kind of lies a lot. Yeah, <laughs> uh, or, yeah. Or like you know, yeah. stories like Michael Jackson stopped in his house to go to the bathroom. Stop, Michael Jackson didn't like stop to the house to go to his bathroom, but his sister <laughs> did. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And then Mikey, Mikey's kind of um, like a all American kid next door. You know, it, it, it's very much like if you think about it, like the the It crew. You know, Mikey would be the Bill, right? Right. right. Uh, and um, and then you got Mikey's older brother, Bran, who's like probably in, he's in high school. Right. And he's like, yeah, he's, you know, pumping iron and <laughs> trying to um, get muscle so he can impress Andy, the cheerleader uh, who are like. So all of those kids up to that before Andy. Yeah, so they're all little kids. Right? They're all, well, little kids except for Bran. Yeah. But they live on the like in the boondocks. Yeah, which they call the Goon Doc. The, I, I, that was new to me. I, yeah, that didn't. Catch and that's that how you get the name Goonies yes. because they live out in the Goon Docks because they're goons. Mm. They're like the kids that live on the other side of the tracks, basically. Yeah. Like they're yeah. literally the rich people are buying all of their houses, their neighborhood up, so they can build, yeah. expand their golf course. Right? Yes. Yeah. So that's all of them. Which I mean, when you think about that, that's why Brand's like working out and doing all that. So he's trying to like get like get an impression beyond like him just living in the goonies yeah in the yeah box, right like, trying to impress the girl who's who's dating the rich guy's yeah. son so then there's andy and steph yeah who, steph is Mar- martha plimpton martha plimpton yeah a little bit more i don't know nerdy for lack of a better like she wears glasses and has shorter hair <laughs> yeah <laughs> but yeah. she you know i'm sure there were i think the bride if i has told me that she related to her growing up um probably just because she had blonde hair and glasses kind right of thing. <laughs> right um uh, but uh yeah, there is a lot of like, yeah, archetypes that are uh, are represented. Troy is a stereotypical rich bully kid, yeah. and oh, he's infuriated. Yeah, <laughs> and, for, and he's only in like two in the like oh, like theatrical cut of the film. He's only in two two or three scenes. Yeah, you know, yeah, like, like the one by the well, the one. Yep. Uh, where he, they, he, that one makes where me he so holds mad. his hand, yeah, like on that, the car, and makes yeah. Brian like, go off. That's the, the thing. kind of stuff that they would do in the eighties, like. Or like the Cobra that would kill runs, somebody. Yeah, you like, run Daniel off the road. Yeah, and like, like in real life, that he goes like, off he, a cliff. He goes. He went off a cliff in in like <laughs> yeah. Washington State. Like yeah. that. It was. A he hill. would have died. It was yeah. a hill, Daniel. It yeah. was a cliff, Ma. <laughs> they say uh, that in the Cobra. Kai. Yeah, the Cobra. Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I love that. Ran me off a cliff. Yeah, it was a hill. Yeah. <laughs> but, so but nonetheless, yeah, very menacing, and yeah, he's a horrible bully. Um, but yeah, so yeah, you were. You, the impression left was like that kid adventure thing. Yeah, that, and 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 you know, of course, I relate to Chunk because he's like the chubby kid. But then I relate to Mikey because I had an older brother that like was that distance in age from me, you know, yeah. and uh, who was kind of a jerk. But when push comes to shove, like I love that, you know, like Brand is really like an older brother to yeah, Mikey. Yeah. He gives Mikey a hard time. But. The whole time. But then when they're like, nobody's around that scene when Mikey's like, on like the porch on the porch, that kills me. <laughs> and Brian comes out and he's he like, just comes out and he's like him. Mikey. And he like says that and like catches him. And yeah. like, 
Ah, he doesn't say know, anything. No. He just knows it's, it's like after the the people come and they want them to sign the papers, and and Brand tells him to get lost, and Mikey tells him to get lost. But then they all go back inside, except for Mikey. And there's this beautiful crane shot, and like kind of moves up as you're watching him think, and you can tell like. I mean, my filmmaking brain is like, they had people like on the roof. They must have had them just like throwing leaves to have like leaves yeah. blow, fall leaves blowing in the breeze and in the rain. And then, yeah, Bran comes out of the house. Doesn't say anything, but my, fuck. He, it just knows that the kid needs a, a hug. Yeah. So. And does it. But and then the, he like drags him in by yeah, his head. By his head. Like, yeah. His, his, his feet are. Oh, it's great. Jesus. Yeah. I know, right? <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's so sweet, but it's like, it's that kind of, it's, yeah, I think it's really well pitched at, at, it, um, young men because of it being like that indirect yeah i mean it's overt in a way it, some of it's really overt like we're chunks like you're gonna live with me now because i love you yeah well <laughs> in, in the, yeah the sloth chunk relationship is another yeah. one that just makes me yeah. uh weep up a little bit when it, like, like i love when they're like sloth is saving them and he has the the rock held up and like Chunk doesn't want to leave him, right? And like yeah, <laughs> Sloth doesn't want him to go, and he's like holding him by under his chin, just like trying to like. He's like, "I love you, Ch- Sloth." He's like, yeah. "Sloth, love Chunk," and they <laughs> yeah. like they're dragging Sloth, like Chunk, out through that tunnel, and they have that shot where he's like fighting to get back into the yeah. tunnel, and like, yeah. oh, so so good. I don't know. It's amazing that you can have this stupid film. With these like cheesy effects, you know, like the pinchers of power or oh, yeah, like all yeah. that, like the um, slick shoes, like those effects are, are just relatively cheesy. The octopus, if you see that cut scene, yeah. like that looks oh, horrific. Yeah, it does. It's probably why it's not in there. Well, yes. I, uh, <laughs> that and I feel like they did. It seemed as though the they knew what was going for it, perhaps in the editing was the the reality of it more so than like trumping it up with supernatural stuff because didn't they like allude to like there was a group in the commentary a like, thing yeah yeah and so i maybe that didn't work either but it seemed like you get really invested in the kids and and that i think that's the payoff is the yeah the, the emotional part like yeah they backed up from the adventure and i feel like there's just like there's like the baseline amount of of adventure there to mm-hmm. keep the story going but it's really about yeah multiple times they come back to each kid kind of steps up in some way to keep the rest of them motivated right yeah like, when they're kind of one person's morale <laughs> is faltering the right other step in to lift them up and there's these big emotional uh like mouths thing in the wishing well like yeah it can it, it looks really melodramatic but when you think about a kid saying that like and you and you remember what's happening to them they're getting evicted from their houses and like yeah all their friends are potentially moving away and you know this is my wish and i'm taking it back i'm taking yeah. them all back yeah like, yeah what kid hasn't felt that way like i i talk to god every night or i do this and like you know all the all this awful stuff still happens so if you had an opportunity to get those wishes back you would mm-hmm. want them right yeah like yeah, yeah. Um, and you know, when that same scene ends with Mikey giving his speech about Troy's bucket, right? And that's all over as soon as we write up Troy's bucket. Yeah. Like the rich guy yeah. uh, finds that they're down there somehow. So, I mean, I don't know. Obviously it's like a movie everybody knows super well, but so we got the kids they are going to get foreclosed, but in the backdrop of that is also like a little prison break at the beginning of the Fratelli family. Oh yeah. We forgot all about the, that, the Fratelli, <laughs> yeah. uh, which, Which is, as a grown up now, that's where all the comedy relief comes from with me. Yeah, is the uh, fertility. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you know, and, uh, like Joey Pants and uh, Robert Davy. Yeah, I don't remember the, the um, actress's name the from, from Mama Fratelli. Yeah, yeah. Mama Fratelli. But the yeah, the brothers break out of prison, or the the mom helps them get away, and didn't they kill a Fed or something like? They a killed federal two, agent? Feds. two Feds. Wait, where when did they do that? When okay, that so um, when they first see the restaurant. And they see the two. They see the two feds walking into the restaurant. Oh, and that's when Data says he's like, "Besides, those aren't drug dealers because they wouldn't be caught in those polyester rags." <laughs> like, and he says it like that. Yeah. Uh, oh, so the, they, that's the feds going in, and so then they get up to the restaurant and they hear the two gunshots, yeah. and they're oh, like, "Oh, somebody it. dropped a pot." Yeah, I dropped a pot. Like yeah. they, they all get on the. 
Like they're all convincing themselves, right? And the, that it'll be okay to go so in. So those there two after. shots were them killing the two FBI oh, of agents. Course. And so they leave first. They see them carrying the bags. Yeah. The bag out, and they're like, "It must be restaurant trash, right?" right? Yeah, like <laughs> that's the first bag, agent yeah. that they're taking out to dispose of, and oh, they left the other okay. one in the freezer. Yes, I. Because when we saw it last night, I I almost thought. Um, so first of all, if I did, so the feds would have been going in to like retrieve them from the prison break, but, um, then you see the Robert Davy character, like he's singing and cooking and he drops a pot really loudly. So yeah. I thought they were sort of suggesting that it was a pot being dropped, which would be absurd to be a mistake for a gunshot, but okay. I oh, see. You learn, there's a learn new things. Yeah, <laughs> <There> I am. <laughs> um, okay. And then the kids go in there and they get kind of, I want to, I want to. Pasta for Jules. Yeah. <laughs> the only thing we serve in this restaurant is tongue. You yeah. boys like tongue? Mm, mm. Yeah. Uh, uh, obviously, I've seen this movie way too many times. But uh, then so which, uh, Chunk gets kind of apprehended by them and kept there with the Fratellis and the sort of where they're hiding out. And then the rest of them, do they escape and come back in for how did I'm suddenly and Ramsey first date. First off is okay. uh, Mama Fratelli. Yeah. Uh, so the series of events of how that happens, um, they get back in the... So they're, the Fratellis leave to get rid of the first body. Yeah. Because yeah. they don't want to transport both of them in their or Jeep or maybe at the they same just, time. Oh, because they did leave with it. Or tr- yeah. Right. <clears throat> so they leave. And they come back with pizza, right? So like, <laughs> yeah. so they they leave to dispose of a body and get dinner. Yeah. But anyways, while they're gone with that first body, that's when they all break back in yes. to the restaurant. Yes, and, and want to get to the lowest point in the floor for the because they've got the treasure map and. Yeah. And that's when they find the fifty dollar bills, and they see they see slo- they <laughs> all see fake sloth. data. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> Love it. Uh. One, that's my second f- favorite delivery in the whole movie. The oh, first, yeah? the first being, "Oh shit, what?" Like, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, which we, I know, we've talked about before on this show. But if you can isolate, and if you, if you could create an acting class just based off that one line, yeah, the world would be full of amazing actors. Like the, that's right. It's the, the best delivery. Like what is that? Oh shit, what? Like. Oh man, it's it's a it's, mess on the floor. <laughs> oh yeah, sure. Um, yeah. So My mom's 50, favorite piece. Yeah. <laughs> she wouldn't be here if it wasn't. Um. Oh, every so, line is a delight. So they uh they're down in the basement. The Fratellis come back, and uh, Chunk at that point had got locked in the freezer with the other body. Oh yes, by accident. God, I'm a- yeah. So they're I'm a- <laughs> so he smelled. He he says they're all crazy. There's a funny farm with your name written all over oh, it. Well, yeah. I'm out of here. <laughs> yeah. And he freezes. He's like, I smell ice That's cream. That's right. <laughs> and yeah, yeah. sees the freezer. He goes and he's like getting all the ice cream out. The other body falls. It's a stiff, and they all <laughs> drop it. Well, then the Fratellis come back and they're freaking out. So they get the body back in, back in the freezer. Well, Chunk was. Help! He was pulling, yeah, and they were pushing, so he gets oh. pulled into the freezer with the body and gets shut in. Yeah, <clears throat> and they decide that their only way out <clears throat> is to take the secret passage that they found under the fireplace. Oh, that's right, that's right. So they get all down in there, and the Fratellis are looking around. They're freaking out because they think Sloth has escaped again. Yes, which is like their oldest brother who's um, deformed and they, they keep basically chained in a room. In the basement. <laughs> in the basement, Who, who yeah. is the it at that point? Because they remember yes, they all they snuck down to see the it and Trump's yeah. like, sounds like calm. I love it. You know? Like, <laughs> um, and they all kind of just see his back a little bit, but then they freak out. So... They're down in the fireplace, and they're like, "Chunk, we're in some really serious shit here. Like, you got to go, you got to go find the police." And so, he—that's when they're. He, of course, is very so. Like, Chunk is me in all aspects. So he's like, <laughs> he's, he's like a really like bold liar, which I guess is not not <laughs> you know, me. I'm just yeah. an exaggerator, right? Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, chubby, which I am, and then uh, um, klutzy. He's like a major like. It's like a like Mikey gives him the map 
knowing that he's going <laughs> to drop it. Like he's like counting down. He's like five, four, oh, yeah. three, I didn't quite, two. Because he wants and like, it to come And like out, yeah. Sloss, like, because he holds it and he wants the map out. Yeah. And he knows if he gives it to Chunk, he's going to drop it. That's, and so yeah, I didn't catch that. So he gives the map to Chunk. Yeah. And Chunk's like, there's this thing over there with these laser beams on it. And like the whole time, Mikey's like, three, oh, two, on. one. And just as he says one, he's like, Whoop! and it like oh, falls and breaks. I you have know. to watch for that tonight. Yeah. So um, Chunk's a, a klutz, and he just so happens to back into this pile of thing that leads to exposing that okay. basement yeah. window. And they're like, oh, the window. So he climbs out that window and inadvertently goes to flag down a car, and it just happens to be the Fratellis who are making their way with the second body yes, to yes. be disposed of again. It's so it's night by that time and Chuck's yeah. on the main road. It's just like, stop, stop. I'm, I'm just, just a, a kid. kid. <laughs> <laughs> I like the dark. I love the dark, yeah. but I hate nature. Oh. <laughs> I hate nature. I say that all the time. Yeah. I, I feel that way. Um, <laughs> which if you think about that, like, they took him on the disposal of a body like they like they. Oh, yeah, because they they definitely got rid of that body after they put him in the car. Right. Before yeah. they came back to the restaurant. Yeah. So like he saw some they were. I mean, when you think of the implications, like they had no problems sticking his hand in a blender like no, that was all going to go do down oh, like that was God. all going to happen. Yeah. Like it's so upsetting. I <laughs> 80, 80s PG, man. Know, <laughs> like, right, yeah. like which again, him. I want to start a petition petition to strike pg-13 and just bring 80s yeah. pg back uh people aren't going to the cinemas that much anyway it's like yep it's a lot of like you got tv 14 <laughs> right or does that even still exist i don't know uh i think those are still there but it, but i always thought uh, like i never understood this pg-13 they got away with more in p with pg than yeah pg-13 they, yeah made but pg-13 <laughs> was made to like to in create this demographic yeah. Yeah. yeah to create this demographic i feel like just go back to pg and yeah let's let guidance. kids say shit and let's yeah. you know like <laughs> there's not i don't think there's one f-bomb dropped in this whole movie no right? and there wouldn't be that's yeah, right yeah. there's shit and damn and ass i think but like et they say penis breath you know i like, know that's yeah <laughs> like uh <laughs> I, that kind of thing <laughs> i just think that uh I, I don't know. I like I've said it before. Kids talk like that. That's yeah. why it's so good. This this reboot of it. Like, yeah, you get it all. It's a direct portrait. I talked like that when I was with my friends of that age. Yeah. And we would be away from adults like you. Yeah. You just you, that's to... how you learn when it's appropriate to swear and when it's not you, like yeah. Yeah. to use swearing. Well, you know, yeah. like the bride always says to her to our nephews well, when they were younger, it's like swearing is fine to be funny or if you stub your toe <laughs> and i think when you're with your kid or your kid friends and stuff you're trying to be funny i mean i yeah. still that's kind of how i think about it <laughs> well i mean my brother grew up calling each other dickhead like my, you <laughs> really know, yeah oh yeah uh we just jumped right to the dick you know i know people that grew up they weren't allowed to say shut up or yeah, yeah. any of those things and like yeah, we just called each other dickhead. I'm, I mean, I'm pretty sure my he, he only referred to me as dickhead like for a while. So, uh, yeah. Um, I don't know where I was going with that. No, I'm glad that's but, funny. But 80s PG, I, I, I love it. Let's I return just return to it. Yeah, let's get back there. I let's get back to the, this free to, this accurate portrayal of. If, if, then we can get some good kid adventure yeah. movies. You well, know? I think now they're doing just like flat out R rated. I mean, there's the that poster that we passed last night. Good boys, good boys. Yeah, yeah it's an R rated movie with kids with younger kid, as kid actors. Uh, yeah, yeah, this age or younger. I'm interested to see if that there's any like um, kickback on that. Like like if yeah, they get flat because of that. Yeah. Um. I I mean, it only makes sense. They put all those kids in those like horrific situations in it. Right. So yeah. now they have this. And that was hugely successful. And hugely <laughs> successful. And now they can say, well, what's the, what's the, str like, how is them just being put in a, I don't know, a funny situation different than this yeah. horror situation? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so I, I support it. I mean, I'm all, I'm all That's for R rated comedy anyways. Yeah. Um, I love kids cursing. <laughs> kids cursing, man. It's so. Is that a uh, um, Modern Family reference? Isn't that like one of his one, oh, of, one of the guys' forgot, like yeah. laugh weaknesses? Is <laughs> yes. white rappers and kids cursing? 
<laughs> it wasn't, but I stay, I agree. I yeah. do watch that show. I remember that. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, all right. So Chunk gets picked back up for, by the Fratellis, which yeah. leads to, cause, so at this point, there's like two plot lines. There's the rest of the Goonies who are just barreling forward, trying to get to One-Eyed like, one eyed willy again like there's another oh my like, god huge yeah huge <laughs> reference right like <laughs> anyways they're trying to get the one eyed willy's treasure um they they even get they get further than chester Copperpot, who was a pro who was a professional <laughs> yeah. you know um i always i i always thought that i said i know i said this last night but i always thought like because he pulls out that lou gehrig baseball card yeah that was being used as yeah. a bookmark right and I'm like, dude, just go, just take that and <laughs> yeah. leave. Like, you save yourself the rest of this hassle. Yeah. Like, just go sell that. You can buy your neighborhood. Everything's good. You right. know? Yeah. Uh, um, which maybe that was intentional. You know, like, I think. Yeah, I, well, I don't know. I think the idea was to help establish the time. Frame. The time, yeah. yeah. But it definitely would have been insanely valuable then. Sure. Um, and then the the other side of the plot is, uh, the chunk. Dealing with the Fratellis then. Yeah, being and, trapped with Sloth and yep. kid, and they're keeping him. And uh, and then the Fratellis pursuing the, because the, 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 that leads to the Fratellis pursuing the Goonies because it they're the three storyline, then it becomes three storylines because then it's the Fratellis, the Goonies, and then Sloth and Chunk. Oh, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> um, I, uh, I just... We we talked about this. The pacing, like when you think about that, how one story arc splits to two, splits to three. Mm-hmm. There's one, two, three, four, five major set pieces, starting with not counting the. I'm saying once they get into the tunnel, there's mm-hmm. like the Chester Copper Pot. There's the pipe tunnel. There's oh, yeah. the Chester Copper Pot tunnel. There's the fountain, there's the skull cave that's leading up to um, the little like log walkway, there's the piano, so six, and then the pirate ship, right? Like, yeah. This movie's an hour and 54 minutes long, which I did not even believe when yeah, I heard that runtime. Yeah, we were time. talking about that today. You were like, what, are you sure? It's like, <laughs> so you have three story arcs, all these major set pieces, and it I mean, it moves. Yeah, it feels like you, you're in there for an hour. Yeah, or I mean, I, I would have guessed an hour and a half, like yeah. time, because yeah. that's because it doesn't feel like too short to where it's like nothing happens, but it doesn't feel like it drags at any point. They're just good at like the all the exposition is told through dialogue. There's no yep, like yep. flashbacks or anything like that. A lot of nice setups and payoffs. That was one of the things I noticed yesterday. Was certain things like. Um, like even the fact that mouth speaks spanish like they set that up so that he can and he does use it talking to the to the maid um but also then that means he can translate the stuff on the the map map and all of that and then like jerk alert they say even just about each other like when chunk shows up right jerk alert but then later and it's used a few times but then it kind of the big payoff is kind of like to alert them that the bad guys are there at the 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 pirate ship and yep uh, stuff like that it's just like everything is and that's good like it's like classic Hollywood screenwriting but it really is like successful very well uh, done it and really it pulls it off yep and well and like I said the only um, discontinuity is the is that is the reference to the octopus yeah I think at, the the, end. The, yeah, at, at the end <laughs> which, which the, I've talked about out. before yeah <laughs> you um, well just in case it's all you know this is the one stop shop for all goodies yeah things. so you felt like that really I'm, threw you off as a kid right? as a kid it really <laughs> pissed me off because it's like they save the day and of all of them data just throws out this lie at the end like yeah which is outside of his character I mean if totally and, and, outside if of his character. saying that too yep. like you would it would kind of make some sense Yep. But uh but yeah, so you're just like kind because, of like Because there is no octopus in the theatrical cut. Yeah. I, I didn't of... even see that until I was an adult. No, yeah. Um and when you see the scene, there was a scene with an octopus yeah. that Data saves, like he feeds his Walkman essentially oh, to yes. the octopus. Yeah. Which would be why he would say the octopus was very scary because he stepped up. That was his moment to step That's up and right, save yeah. the group, right? Yeah, yeah. Um and so <laughs> It totally makes sense why he says it once you know that scene exists, right, but then when right. you see that scene, you're just like, 
Man, am I glad they made it look like Data lied instead yeah. of putting that octopus in there because it, it's it's off putting compared to the rest of the film. Everything else is so well done. Yes, yeah, and that yeah. is obviously uh, air powered animatronic. Yeah. Um, did you ever see Ed Wood the movie Ed Wood? Uh, no, I be, bits and pieces of it. They, that's uh, something like in Ed Wood's movie. I think it was Bride of the Monster. Bella Lugosi fights an octopus and it's mostly in the movie bride of the monster you know b-, b movie by like the notoriously worst director of all time from the 50s um it's mostly stock footage of of a of an octopus and then but then they kind of borrowed one and and basically they're like they go to a pond at night then this is documented or portrayed in the movie called edward directed by tim burton starring martin landau as bell lugosi and johnny depp as edward and he's like so they get to this pond. They've stolen this octopus from the studio after hours. They've parked a bunch of cars around the pond for lights. And then uh, it's like the middle of the night and Lugosi's like, you know, addicted to morphine and just like in the decline of his life uh, was once Dracula on top of the world. And and then Ed Wood just goes, uh, it's a, there's a, there's, they don't have any of the animatronics. It's just like a hollow like, oh. rubber thing. He's like... Just uh, get in the water there and thrash around with it. Looks like it's killing you. <laughs> <laughs> and he does it. Bless his heart. Like Lugosi just gets in there and he's like, ah, ah, and he's just like he's moving the arms and stuff. Ah, yeah. And it's not much of a step up from that. And yeah. you know the Steven Spielberg produced Richard Donner directed yeah. Goonies and written by Chris Columbus. Look, screenplay, that tri- yeah. That trifecta. I know. I, like. I wrote down some of the the credits of like where those people were in there. So Richard Donner, um, he was in his mid fifties at the time of Goonies yeah. shooting, <laughs> and he had already directed Superman and Superman Two at that yeah. point, right? Superman One and Two were shot at the same time initially. Um, okay, yeah, I didn't know that. But they ran out of money, and so now you can get on home video like Superman Two, the Richard Donner cut. Yeah, and what they ended up doing is like part of it is rolled into the. They kind of combined them because they weren't, you know, didn't know if they'd make a Superman too. Anyway, that's a longer story, but hugely successful movie, Superman. <laughs> um, and then a few you others. Want one of these? You want to try? Uh, these? No, I better not, just because. Uh, Got to drive up to Alamo, so I'm gonna. But thank you. Um, yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, I mean, I'll end up drinking it. <laughs> Um, but so I made note of the Superman because that was like a big deal. He made a yeah. bunch of other stuff. But in 1985, before Goonies, he made Lady Hawk, directed Lady Hawk. Okay. Goonies. Then the next movie he has Lethal Weapon. And then he goes into that whole thing yep. um, with the Lethal Weapon series. But like, so it's like Lady Hawk, 85, Goonies, 85, Lethal Weapon, next to 87, 88, Scrooged, and so on and so forth. So Donner's a heavy hitter. Um it's produced by Steven Spielberg, who's forty years old at the time. I learned last total night. heavy he, hitter, and he wrote the story. Like he wrote, yeah. he, it was kind of his idea of like, yeah. here's what here's what happens, like the treatment, right? Yeah, or just like this happens and this happens. Like yeah. basically, what everything you're relaying and have relayed is like stuff that right. Spielberg would have come come up with. Um, but Christopher Columbus, Chris Columbus probably goes by. <laughs> yeah, he wrote the screenplay, so he told you know took the story and tells like how it's told in uh, cinematic terms. His he wrote this movie in 1984 called Reckless, I guess. I don't okay. know. I hadn't, had never seen it, but also 84 Gremlins, and then there's that Gremlins uh, mention, which yep. I never knew before last night. So, but like these are his first credits, basically Gremlins, and then Goonies, and then you know he'd go on to direct like Home Alone and all this stuff. So, yeah, but, yeah, and then of course Kathleen Kennedy produce, is producing as well, who yep. has a hand in every great movie. It seems and, like. Um, uh, <laughs> And uh, Marshall, isn't it Frank Penny, Marshall? Yeah, isn't that Penny Marshall's dad. Like, uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. like yeah. so. Frank Marshall's. Involved. So you have you have Chris, you have um, Kathleen Kennedy, Frank Marshall, and Steven Spielberg are all producing this thing. Yeah, who are all top? Even of their by game. this point, even at this point, they are established. Like, oh yeah, people in Hollywood yeah. who are. You when know, we watch that preview, and they're like Steven Spielberg presents. Um, you know Richard Arnold's the Goonies, but when they say Steven Spielberg presents, it's this overhead shot of kids on bikes. It looks just like ET. Yeah, <laughs> so absolutely. Like yeah, they're trying to like zero in on that. Yeah, you're getting like peak form for these people. Um, which is another like, which when you hear about some of the things that kind of happen on set and the troubles they had, it, um, Richard Donner does not hold back at all. Even in the at the the period 
shot behind the like making of the Goonies. Yeah, he says that That's he so says fun. that thing where he's like, each one of these kids on their own are just fine. Yeah, but I did not anticipate <laughs> yeah. how hard it would be when they all would come together. Yeah, they and, must have been like herding cats or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> and and just how and they show that repeatedly, like yeah. like him trying to get them, and like they're all just like being the goonies like yeah you know and like, the same thing in the cast commentary like the video cast yeah. commentary you can watch it's just chaos everybody's yeah. talking over everybody <laughs> yeah. everybody kind of is their trying character. to roll them in and they you know <laughs> oh there was this great bit because and i don't know if you remembered but you were you had because we I watched dozed, this very late I dozed, at night. yeah but evidently there was an old uh agreement made between donner and martha plimpton that if she stopped what was it chewing her nails i think yeah, stop biting her nails. He would give her a hundred bucks, and she goes. By the way, I've Dick, I've stopped doing that. And he pulls out a hundred dollar bill and gives it to her. Really, and she freaks out. Oh, in the that's video comment. so awesome! It was oh. so cool. And then he was joking with a lot of other ones about like, you know, I got out of bets with other you guys, but you haven't stopped doing what you're supposed to stop doing. Oh, that's so great. <laughs> yeah, it was I, so fun. I, I mean, I'm sure it's mostly said in jest, but you can tell yeah. like he. Had, I mean, this guy had come from making all these great films, right? Like these yeah. big films. And now he's like hurting eight-year-olds. Right. You know? Yeah. So. Don't want to work with animals or kids, you know. Yeah. What they say. And so, yeah. Uh, and then he had an ensemble cast of them, uh, of these big. He such an pers- amazing job, though. Like, if you're yeah. watching any one of those kids at any point in time in any one of those shots, something good is happening. And yeah. something probably intentional yep. is going on. Big eyes. Big eyes. Big like, eyes. That, that was, was his direction. direction. Yeah. yeah. His common. <laughs> Get, make your eyes bigger. That's so, right. Yeah. Um. Because they keep saying that in the commentary, like every shot where yeah. it was close, <laughs> one of them would be like, "Big eyes, big, big eyes." eyes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh. Oh. And 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 you can tell, he. You know, of course, he was still trying to herd them in that commentary. Yeah. But it's it was very endearing. Like you can tell he like loved every one of these kids and yeah. loved that experience. Yeah. You know, like as hard as it was. Um, Martha Plimpton, I told you last night, is on because there's been rumors of Goonies 2 since this oh, DVD yeah. came out, even In, before uh, 2010, that. 2010, yeah, I was curious when um, it was made. Uh, that there's this good, like, a script's been approved and, like, everybody's on board, and then, like, you don't hear anything for four years, and then, like, a script's been approved, and, like, Sean Austin says he'll make it, and, mm-hmm. like, all this stuff. And <clears throat> the last one was. Martha Plimpton is pretty confident that it's never going to happen, but Richard Donner just keeps perpetuating the rumor to torture us for how awful we were during <laughs> filming. Like that that's basically because yeah. they uh, uh, and that would imply to me anyways, I read that and that implies like all of them are chomping at, would would do it. Would, would yeah. do it, you yeah, know. And some of them, you know, like yeah, are kind of big they're all pretty successful in some way. I mean, they're all yeah. still except for those that have chosen not to work as much anymore, like Data or yeah, but Andy. I think they're I think they're I think they're very successful in their field that yeah. are not acting. Yeah, yeah. you know what and I Chunk, mean. Chunk, yeah, like like because Chunk is a very successful lawyer, <laughs> entertainment like entertainment lawyer, entertainment right? lawyer. Yeah. yeah, and uh, um, not at all chunky anymore. No, not, not that it would be the matter if he was, but <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's uh, yeah, they're all doing great. And Josh, um, Josh Brolin, yeah, he's like this heartthrob. He looked good in that video commentary, in that commentary yeah, yeah. Awesome. i think he's like a, he just keeps getting better with age like as he yeah. continues to age and i mean but like that's fucking thanos now can you right imagine, yeah. like can you imagine thanos going back to be bran and the goonies like it's so cool that he's so down for that I yeah love i love it yeah yeah i love that we we've talked about it that viral video from some years ago where he's a grown-up playing brand oh Halloween the picture party. yeah yeah like for he is there a video of that or is it just a no picture? i think it's just did i say oh, video yeah. i meant picture I it's just <laughs> it's just an image because yeah. he shared it on twitter yeah but he dressed yeah. up as brand at some halloween party years ago yeah and but he looks like brand would hope to look right yeah He's all like yeah. jacked and like yeah very manly <laughs> so uh um so what i i'm curious because you and uh the bride obviously have a deep love for this movie and yeah we, like do you remember your first experience with it or no, I'm not certain. I did not see it as a kid. Like my my version of this was the ripoff Monster Squad with okay. the Universal Monsters yep. um which we've talked about uh on this show already. Um and actually one of my favorite things that happened yesterday when we first sat down, so one of the great things about the Alamo Draft House is that they show these like that the stuff before the movie, before they even get to the trailers and put the lights down, is like themed programming. Like they put it together. I'm sure it's the same in all the theaters. They showed um, 
like the pirate movie that they're watching in the Goonies. They showed that. They showed the Cindy Lauper video, uh, and they showed several clips from what you say was like after school specials and stuff that and yeah, kids like incorporated. Like, like kids incorporated and um, like the Disney. There's like the Disney Magical Theater that used to be. Yeah. I, I like li- they would have little like um. What do they call that? Like serial styled stories, like yeah. self-contained stories, you know? Yeah, um, yeah. Like anthology. That's what oh, I mean. Oh yes, yes, yeah. So, so they were showing those with Trunk. Like it was basically right from around the same time as as he played in Goonies, and so he looked the same. He was like a song and dance man in one of them. But one of the first ones we saw when we sat down playing the bully in one of them was Ryan Lambert, who plays Rudy in the Monster Squad, kind of like the brand character because he's a little bit older. Yeah, um, the cool guy, cool older kid. And I literally, I sat down and goes, I went, holy shit, it's Rudy. Or maybe even yeah. fuck, I don't know. Like yeah. I yelled <laughs> and I was like, oh, no, <laughs> no. But I was just like shocked. I was like, what is this movie? Yeah. I have to see it. Because Chunk's know, riding some like souped up <laughs> pedal bike yeah. that like the b- bullies are trying to chase him into yeah. the football team. Because what is like that, that. going to do? Yeah. And then he has this this bike has all these buttons on the, the and, he, and he pushes super jump yeah and he, <laughs> and he takes up over the like goalposts yeah. you know it's to like get away from the bad bullies. green screen yeah. but uh but anyway so that was but it was like this convergence of what was my goonies as a kid which was monster squad and then um you know now i've come to love goonies but i i'm not 100 percent certain but i think that i first watched it during a slow day working at a uh, hometown video when I was a teenager okay. working at a video store, like I was just like, Oh, I've never seen Goonies. This is something I could, you know, put on. And if people come in, it, but that's, that's my best guess. Um, but then, yeah, just once I did see it, I fell in love with it. And, uh, I believe the bride grew up with it this yeah. morning. I don't remember what it was, but like I woke up a little bit before her kind of got back in bed and, and cuddled her a little bit and said something, I can't remember what it was, but I said, I didn't give any other setup. I'm just like, that rock, God put that rock there for a reason. And I didn't know if she would know. Yeah. We were just talking yeah. about that line. And she goes, and she did it perfectly with all the ums <laughs> of Martha Plimpton's character. I didn't even tell her because she yeah. barely was awake how great that was and how yeah. tickled you'd be about that. Because I know you told me that was one of your favorite lines too. For Martha Plimpton. Yeah. Like that's yeah. her like perfect delivery. <laughs> yeah. She's just. <laughs> Um, brand, um, God put that rock, um, yeah. there yep, for there a it reason. is, yeah, yeah. And, um, <laughs> maybe, um, shouldn't move it. <laughs> oh, that's great. Uh, oh, so, that's... so I think, I don't know exactly her story yet, but we'll probably hear about it off mic tonight, but, uh, yeah. she, I think she's very familiar with it from being a great. kid, but I came to it as an adult and was just able to like really appreciate it as an adult and kind of fall in love with it and that's great because yeah. it, it it i could see i know it's hard to if you don't have the nostalgia to like connect with yeah. the movie of it w- with yeah. it you know cuz when you're a kid it's really easy to overlook all movies are good when you're a kid. All of them, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, you, like you're just happy you're getting to watch yeah. a movie, right? You literally like, think I, like every movie is great. Like, yeah, I heard that on my that podcast. I love how did this get made? Where they were talking about like at some point they talked about the first movie they saw that made them realize that movies like not all movies are going to be great. Like you're like, oh, maybe I didn't like that as much. <laughs> like, yeah, and I don't remember what that movie would have been for me, but I definitely remember that idea of like you just kind of love all of them. Yep. Um, which is nice, <laughs> actually. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I find the older I get, like I just want to like things. I don't care what I like them for. I don't like things, ironically, as I've discussed. Um, but uh, I I find too, because because I was like, so yeah, I, I didn't see Goonies as a kid, but when I did see it, for some reason, I it I can kind of integrate it into the like time frame of. I love to think about that that came out around the time of these other movies. Yeah. And I think even though I don't have a nostalgia for the movie itself, I do for like some of the actors, the way that sort of movies look from that time and sound and the, the I don't know. I, I find that the, the period, I, I see a lot of these movies for the first time now as an adult, but the period itself sort of takes me back. Yeah. And uh, even though it's new to me, it's also sort of familiar Anyway, but but again though that the it like Stranger Things feels like the Goonies, 
Mm-hmm. Um, uh, you know, the, the, yeah. these eighties. It even I wonder. It though feels I feels like it, the Goonies. Uh, it, I think it, it came around 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 the same time. Yeah, eighty six, right? Yeah. Well, the uh, oh the, the book. book. Yeah, yeah, the book. Yeah. yeah. And then you would have the television series later in the eighties yeah. or early nineties. Um, there's this thing where it, it's like it's it hits perfectly. That's why they're trying to reproduce it now. That's why those things are so successful now. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that it. I feel like so I've always loved the Goonies my whole life, and I can think of other times where I've I've brought it up, mm-hmm. and you just have to say that and like. Typically, if you're in a group of people and you're just like, man, I love the Goonies. Like, if you're talking about movies and you just say, man, I love the Goonies, there will be at least three other people that will be like, that's the best fucking movie on the planet. Like, it's such an approachable and it, I just feel like it it would come with this, the, the, like, child of the 80s starter pack, right? Like, you get a copy, like, there would be a copy of the Goonies would be in there, you know? That's right, yeah. Um. I, I can remember I was in my, during my undergrad, it was like the first day of the semester and we were in a, cl- I was just starting a class and the professor was making us go up to the front of the room and just give like a short, like, what's your name? What's your major? I might've even been like a public speaking class or something like that. So that's why we had to get up and talk at a podium. Mm-hmm. We had to go up and it was just very simple. State your name, state your major, state your, I think there might've been a list, like either your favorite movie, your favorite song or whatever. And it wasn't even favorite. I I didn't even use the word favorite at that time because I hadn't established Goonies as my favorite. But I remember saying, like, I did all those other things. And then I was like, you know, I'm a child of the 80s. I love the Goonies. And, like, the whole class was like, yeah. Like, oh, it was awesome. like this unifying thing, which yeah. I feel like is this, just this recurring thing that happens when you mention the Goonies, your love for the Goonies. It's this, there is something about that film with people who grew up in the 80s, mm-hmm. that there is some kind of connection to it, I feel yeah. like, um, that it reached everybody in some way, even if they even didn't if come I didn't to, see it then. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, it still makes you nostalgic for that yeah. time growing up. Because that's the time right? when I was a kid, if yeah. nothing else. Yeah. yeah. So, um, I think that there's a lot of more... Uh, there's a lot of movies that are timeless from that era, but I just feel like that one has this like universal appeal that yeah. like, yeah, it's really hard to find people that don't like the Goonies who grew up in that time period. Then I would be very suspect of those people. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I, I mean, it's easy when you think about all that stuff, like how it becomes a favorite, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's not a big stretch. No, no, um, no. So, uh, but yeah, I, I just love, I mean, you know, we've talked about this too. Like the mom from the Goonies isn't, she's the mom from monster squad. Too. She's the mom from monster squad. <laughs> she's who, like the mom of the And 80s. that's like, <laughs> and that's the house that in monster squad is the house that lethal weapon takes yeah, place. It turns in. Out it's like on the same street. I thought it was the same oh, house, okay. but it's like right across the street or something. Yeah. And that's funny too. Like the mom. So that mom, uh, Sorry, lady, <laughs> we don't remember your name, but the mom she, from Goonies, yeah, no, and Monster Squad. But she ultimately married Robert Zemeckis, who you know directed back, the Back to the Futures and all that stuff. Right. But also, so um, you know, Richard Donner directed Lethal Weapon, which was the first. Actually, Lethal Weapon might have been the second movie written by Shane Black. The first might be Monster Squad. Wow. I, I remember looking that up last time, but yeah. it's all like. Yeah, it's it's fun these little connections as well, like just to kind of put it all Mary, together. Mary Ellen Trainer is Ellen her Ellen Trainer is yeah. her name. So like she's in Lethal Weapon also. She's the psychiatrist. Oh uh, yeah, that's, that's right. So, so I mean, it's like all these connections. Like like again, quintessential eighties. Like yeah. you're starting to see like some like Corey Feldman. Who is it? Corey Feldman or Corey Haynes? Yeah, Corey Feldman. Corey yeah. Feldman like. Who is one of the Corys who I yeah. feel like had this like they like this stint in the eighties and yeah, they were always in those movies together. Martha Plimpton is another I feel mm-hmm. like staple from the eighties. That, yeah. that like not Brat Pack though. Like that's no. different. You yeah, know? that is different. Uh, I like that too. And I came to sure, that later sure. in life as well. But definitely a different thing. Um It's yeah. nice to see the usage, you know, of like uh, Sean Aston in um in Stranger Things. You know, like he's growing yeah. up now and he played Bob and 
Uh, I like the way that show is using those kind of like Matthew Modine, like they're using these eighties actors as well. Yeah. And even like Matthew Modine, we were not through season three yet, but the bride was like, um, cause I was just like, I was, Oh, cause I don't, I don't know. I was just, no, no, sorry. It's not Matthew Modine. Matthew Modine is of course. Is, in Stranger is, yeah. Things, he's pop. I'm thinking of Carrie always. Who's in uh, season three as the villainous man. Oh whatever, yeah, yeah. Who I have always disliked because I didn't see Princess Bride as a kid. Oh, yeah. Probably. But uh, she's like, look, she said to me, she goes, this is an 80s movie. He's going to get his comeuppance. Don't worry about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is true. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't want to talk any season three stuff of Stranger Things. Uh, I don't I've been spoil enjoying anything. that. Yeah. What are some things um, that you, was there anything you noticed for the first time, like seeing it? Andy's panties. Oh, that was <laughs> on the big screen. That yeah. was uh, uh, I didn't yeah. I didn't realize how many times I, I didn't realize how many Punk times band. you saw Andy's panties. <laughs> yeah. Like uh that was really cool. <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> um I'm trying to think what else. There was something that I I was like, Was it oh. the Chunks dad attire? Yes. <laughs> or you told yeah, me that last like, night. <laughs> I had never noticed that in all of the years of watching this film. Chunk's dad literally the only difference is he's wearing a trucker's cap. Yeah. Like and he's of course a grown man, yeah. like a middle-aged man. He has the same Hawaiian shirt on, he has the same plaid <laughs> pants on, he has the same nylon jacket, yeah. like red nylon jacket yes. and then this red trucker's cap when they all show up at the beach, which interesting fact that I just learned about uh last night too was that's for the most part all those parents are those kids' actual parents. Yeah, I or, or like relatives, uh, if not immediate parents. I was. Yeah, yeah. Uh, of course, Mikey's parents are Mikey and Brand's parents are yeah. not their actual parents. They're right, not even right. real brothers. Right. I think probably not day this too, just because I recognize that guy from other stuff. Oh, unless, really? Unless he is, and maybe that's how the maybe kid how ended he got up. into it, yeah. right? Uh, yeah. But like uh, Andy's parents are her parents, yeah. and Chunks are, and that's so cool. Uh, which that's which is, Chunks' parents. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's cr- and I think his real sister, like, because they say, like, when he's like, you know, I knocked my sister Edie down the stairs and blamed it on the dog <laughs> yeah. and I stole my uncle. Like, that's really his uncle's name and his sister really oh, is named Edie. So, like, that. yeah. That's uh, one of the best scenes ever, of course. <laughs> the the chunk torture scene, which, which, again, if you just come out, if you just. Yeah, when you say chunk torture back, scene, you're like, oh, like, when, when you, you move hear back, the words, yeah. yeah and, you, and you look at it with adult eyes, you're like. <laughs> There's three grown people threatening to stick a a small child's hand in a blender to get information yeah. out of them. Like that's awful. That's insane. Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but the running gag is because she says, "Tell us everything," and he's yeah. like, "Everything," and she's like, "Everything." Okay, I'll talk. Yeah. <laughs> and he just and, he and then it's just like blah 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 like all these horrible like yeah. kid things like horrible kid things. They're not anything. Except for the puke one, that, like that. one, is, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I I love Jake. He's got his arm like his. It starts out they're all very intimidating, yeah. And, but then by the end, like Mama Fratelli and Francis, Francis is to pay. I don't wear a hairpiece. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've never been to the Bronx Zoo. Uh, Francis and Mom. Mama Fratelli are just like they're just over it. They're like, oh, this kid doesn't know jack shit. Yeah, uh, <laughs> but Jake, by that point when he's telling the story, I, you have to watch. Like, that's really where I get my enjoyment out of this movie now. Is like, I'm not watching what's forefront. Like, I yeah. love watching. Yeah, because everybody's contributing to that scene, and so like, Jake. He's like by this point he's got his arm around Chunk. Yeah. He's and he's smirking. He's like patting him, like, come on, keep going, buddy. Like, yeah. I gotta hear more of this. He's, he's like, and, and he like tells the whole story. And the whole time, like Francis and Mama Fratelli are just like, Oh like this is the one thing these criminals that just killed two people are like, This is too far. Yeah. But Jake's just grinning ear to ear. Like he's just like, I'm starting to like this kid, you yeah. know? Like, oh man, that's I, oh, in that moment you saw, was that for the first time last night when the slap that you were telling us about? No. Oh, that's something you've known about? I've, yeah. And that's one of those things that like you have to really watch, but don't watch what's happening. Watch the other people in the scene. So 
multiple times the running joke is Jake always says that Francis is her favorite. Mm. And Mama Fratelli has, does not mince any words. No. Yes, he is. <laughs> like, yep, that's right. Like, the running joke is you always take his side, Mom. And she's always like, that's right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, yeah. why haven't you learned that by now? Right. <laughs> and so one of those times. And she's all, you notice she's never smacking Francis. Like she's always smacking right, right, Jake, yeah. right? And His so, piece will come loose. <laughs> yeah. And so there's one point where um, Mama Fratelli is getting mad at them because they're fighting over the pepperoni. He's like, you want your pepperoni? And he throws the piece <laughs> yeah. at him. Yeah. Right? Like, like, let's shoot ourselves. Or like, yeah. Yeah. Kill each and they got, other and they got, <laughs> you want to kill each other over pepperoni? Let's go. <laughs> and so Mama Fratelli calms him down. And if you notice, like, Francis totally is playing his character right because he's like, I'm going to step back now and let mama take care of yeah. my fight for me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so he's got his headphones on and he's trying to get his Walkman going. And Jake like, <laughs> is, is totally playing his role that well because he's like, mom, this isn't fair. Mm -hmm. You know, you're taking his side. <laughs> and she's like, that's right. And she hauls off to slap him and she really smacks him every time. They yeah. even say that in the you commentary. Can, like, can't miss it. Like. <laughs> no. She hauls off to smack him and catches the cord for Francis's headphones. Yeah. <laughs> and she just follows through with the smack and gets him and rips the headphones <laughs> off of Joey Pants's head, yeah. right? Yeah. And he breaks character. He, can can, like, like, he, crack, yeah. he starts to crack up at it that she got, like, pulled the headphones on because he's surprised. And luckily the camera, like, it, the scene ends. But it played, like... He's laughing his ass off. Like, yeah. he, oh, man. You know that, like, one frame more, he'd be <coughs> doubled over. I would totally, uh, I would totally recommend for anybody that loves this movie, if you haven't yet, just watch it again, but pay attention to all the, like, the other characters. Yeah. In, in yeah. the scene, in the frame, you know? Yeah. I really think the comedy, the true comedy gold is, is, th how they're keeping their characters in the scene while yeah. somebody else is 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 like perpetuating the story yeah right and there's often that going on like where that <clears throat> glorious thing where data falls through and then he's just like bitching about it like, these guys you know, these are, you know, <laughs> I, I spend <laughs> months and months and months developing them and making them and they're telling me the while data is falling and like, <laughs> data always refers to himself in the third person yeah. <laughs> I never noticed that, um, and this is a pretty obvious thing, but like when he comes like zip lining into the Walsh house for the first time, I never noticed that he calls himself 007 all the time. And then he plays the James Bond music, yep. with a, like a record, probably the same thing that he used. That he to feeds the, the octopus. The octopus yeah. Yeah, it's like yeah. Everything like that pays off. I, I, I hadn't noticed that even like the pinchers of power. I think it's in a deleted scene mm -hmm. where he accidentally shoots them into maybe mouth's butt or but, something, but you see that they work yeah. as opposed to all these other things. And yeah. then that pays off when you see him say, and now, life. unfortunately, that's the piece that, like, I, I mean, they do establish with his, when they show his character the first time he shoots that suction cup at that 55-gallon drum, and then it drags him across the alleyway <laughs> instead of the other way around, yeah. right? Um, so it establishes this thing that his, his uh, inventions are, like, hit or miss, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, but I, another thing that really bothered me when I was a kid was, like, like when they when it came down to push like when he's finally like I'm gonna make a stand mm -hmm. at that last scene on like the ship yeah yeah and uh, I it really bothered me as a kid like because he opens his jacket and like the the po boxing glove oh, like, hits yeah, himself hits in the him, face yeah. and then it cuts to Joey Pants and like Joey Pants is like hysterically laughing at this child that they're also about to kill like <laughs> yeah. it, it really bothered me as yeah. a, that that really got me as a kid as the menace of that <laughs> yeah because i was like you know is it he, he, the pictures of power saved him and like they the slick shoes worked and like everything right, yeah. and like now all of a sudden his like inventions are fucking up like what's going on <laughs> like oh it was awful but the, you know they now you see like that the the that first thing was a failure his dad's invention fails the one that you Oh yeah the see. camera yeah. thing at the end yeah yeah So and then he tells him you're my greatest invention You're my greatest invention yeah that whole that, that whole thing like on the beach like that yeah, oh, oh man that Niagara happens. Falls yeah it's Niagara Falls like yeah. Um yeah so it, it it man it's such a good movie but I I really would suggest if you haven't watched it in a while and it's one of your favorites like just pick it up and and watch it even watch it on mute, just to watch their reactions and their facial expressions on yeah. how they're filling that scene. 
Yeah, there's always and you will going on. laugh your ass off. Like <laughs> that, that thing you were showing me uh, last night when the they are putting Chunk in the car, like when they come across him on, yeah. the, on the side of the road. And, it, and it's a <laughs> it's a very uh, selective focus. So yes. Jake is in yeah. focus, and uh, Chunk and Francis, who's trying to get him in the back of the car, are trying to get him. Uh, it, they're in really soft focus, like it's almost yeah, it's kind of blurry. Fuzzy and, yeah. yeah, but like. It's Chunk, like, fuck, 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 like, like he's, yeah, like, and Francis everybody. is trying to get him, like, it, there's no, he doesn't actually finish fuck, but he's, like, fuck, It seems fuck, like fuck, it, yeah. You know, like, because he <laughs> knows that he's in. about to get put yeah. in there, but it's out of focus. Oh, man, comedy gold. Like, yeah. just, the, no, it's not, like, oh, you know, like that's so hilarious. Like that. like, yeah. One just, of my favorite, like, I don't even know what he says, but it's, like, when they first put Chunk in the room with Sloth. It's just this genuine. There's a lot of really good like listening. So like Chunk is looking at, over his shoulder at Joey Pants or whoever puts him there, and he's just like he's like no, I don't. It's just like something very understated. Yeah, it's, it's like an obvious interaction that's not. He's barely acting, if at all. Yeah, but it's like little moments like that that really help add up. Because he some... asks him if it's too tight, and he's like, yes, it is. Yeah, like, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah. It's really perfect. <laughs> I never noticed too. The you ever notice that the the mailbox is in front of the Walsh is it's like handwritten us and them us and them oh on each really other, like in red and blue. I don't know wow. what that signifies or whatever. But yeah, I also never knew that Mikey's dad ran the historical society and that there was the I never just the museum took the time and to, yeah yeah realize that that's why they had that stuff in the attic and. There is continuity there. Like yeah, there, there's there, all that stuff yeah. is like in place and, and makes sense. And, and it's really, it, like you said, it's like classic Hollywood script writing. Yeah. Like instead of sitting somebody down and saying, our father works at the museum right. and like yes. we have, we are storing these things here for the museum. Like yeah. you just pick all that up in exposition. Yeah. You know, and it's nice because it's rewarding for if you don't pick it up, you don't need to necessarily know or accept that it's there if you want it. It's yeah. not like spoon fed to you which is also and like chester nice. Copperpot, they just like read that one little article but that yeah i mean that's a major plot point that's yeah. how they get the stick of dynamite and everything yes. is with, with chester yeah. Copperpot. so um really just it's just really classic storytelling and you're right there's a lot of payoffs like there's a yeah. lot of like if you pay attention it, that it they reference that yeah. stuff. I love the the reoccurring thing with like, yeah, that's what I said. Like, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> especially and that's like the, a runny, like runny the mom says it as yeah, well. Yeah, like he, and even the brands like workout stuff, like him hanging upside down. So when the mom does like discover him like strapped around to the chair, she's like, can't you just exercise as a normal person? Yeah. She thinks it's like one yeah. of his weird things. <laughs> oh, it's uh, it is a perfect movie. I would yeah. say. Um. I ran across a. I'll wrap up. We'll we'll wrap up with these couple with these thing couple things. We got like three minutes left. Um, I I will tweet out the name of it, but there is a it, there is a little documentary of two men who love the Goonies. Really? Who like make a road trip to Astoria to like? Oh, that's a real town. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Total oh, real I didn't town. Know that. That's a real house. Actually, the owners of that house have a no trespass like they're tired of people making the trip to see the goonies oh, house wow um i thought it was at least a fake town it sounds like a fake town no to a story really really exists i think and but there is a documentary of these two friends like kind of doing what we're doing right now mm-hmm. where they take this cross-country trip and they're quoting the goonies and they're they like go to all the places in a story that end up in the movie and oh. uh, um it, it it really it that, so Definitely, I'm going to order that documentary because I want to see that. Yeah. And then uh, um, the other thing, man, I don't know. Uh, well, this will not be the last time we talk about the I'm, Goonies I'm ever. Sure it's just our, uh, I'm sure not. I'm sure not. This is just concept. our long, long, short drink remembers yeah. the Goonies. Uh, this is the reason why we're able to record. Like, in again, person, yeah. Like, in the, person. The reason for the know. trip. Um. Let's go watch it again. Yeah, we're gonna go watch it again. We gotta, we gotta wrap this up so we can. Gotta so, get our costumes. Yeah, uh, yeah. So, um, make sure that you're heading over to youtubecom slash drink now. Yeah. Uh, tell your friends. Tell, tell your friends. Your subscribe. We need that kids. play button now. Hide That's what we're gonna hound you about. Yeah. yeah. Uh, 
Make sure that you're heading over to uh, Twitter and searching for um, at LWSD pod and follow yeah. us on Twitter. We'll post uh, uh, just a, the stuff from the pinball, all that. We'll hashtag it with whatever yeah, number episode. I'm sure is. you've realized by now, like we're not recording our shows. Oh, These, of course, yeah. are unique. We're not recording our shows the way we had been because yeah. uh, YouTube has discontinued Hangouts Live. So we're yeah. currently troubleshooting some alternate ways that we can try to make that uh, video portion happen. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so you probably realize that by now we're, we're still getting our audio. You can still find our podcast episodes, mm -hmm. um, yep. on, uh, iTunes and on Stitcher or your other, uh, podcast apps, go to long dot com, which will take you to our, web, our, um, SoundCloud right now, ultimately our webpage, but to our SoundCloud where you can get the episodes. um, Go to audibletrial.com slash LWSD, get your free audiobook, uh, start your audible trial, get your free audiobook on us. Uh, other than that, I think that's it. That's, yeah. Good show. Good yeah. visit. Thank you Man. for coming out yeah. all this way. Thank you so much <laughs> to you and the bride for hosting me. Our uh, pleasure. I'm looking forward to a shit the bride says about my visit because I'm sure there might be something. Well, well, maybe, maybe, I don't know. maybe. We'll you're, see. Get, you're getting it live and in person. Oh yeah, you know? no, man. She, <laughs> man. There's been some zingers. <laughs> I have had some zingers. She like that's hey, just because she liked to. Yeah. Oh yeah. No. Yeah. No. Uh, hey, dumb and dumber. She sent a text to it. We'll end on this. She sent a text that said, "Hey, dumb and dumber. I'm stopping at the liquor store if you want me to pick anything." Oh, she up. said that. I yeah, did, she said that in that. that text, and I said, "Which one am I?" That was my reply. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I replied, "Which one am I?" And she's like, "Well, since you have to ask, you were the former, but now you're the latter." <laughs> <laughs> so there you go. There's the shit the bride says direct from Palmer's mouth. That's right. That's uh, a new way to get the news. <clears throat> uh, yeah. But other than that, thanks for listening. Um, thanks again to the bros uh, for yeah. podcasting with us on the last episode. That was great. Uh, go watch the Goonies. Like, stop this right now. Yeah. Go watch. The, I hope this has, if anything, has inspired you to want to go see this, watch yeah. this movie again. If you've never uh, seen it as an adult, I know cer certain things don't hang hold up. I don't know. I think they do. But anyway, I I love this movie. I didn't watch it as a kid. I watched it as an adult. I love it as an adult. I'm about to dress up, forty year old man dressing up with yeah. <laughs> like Brand, <laughs> Brand. But uh, well, thank you for thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. And cheers into my family. Yep. See you, Long Walkers. Long